Good afternoon, Your Highness. <coughs> uh, just taking a minute just to reflect as to why I should be asked here. And the only allergy I can is that it's a great honour to be asked by CMEX on their centenary year. And uh, I thank you very much for that. But the analogies just keep piling up in this 25 years. And uh, 25 years we went into the farm we're in now. Uh, but I would say to Mike Dennison, you know how to spoil Christmas and New Year for a hard-working dairy farmer when he knows he's a CMEX presentation to give. Uh, before lunch, we had a, a very good uh, from Sally, and uh, she now classes, classes us dairy farmers as entrepreneurs. Uh, so you'll have to have friends that are out there that are going to slag me for this. I'm going to introduce myself as a dairy, an entrepreneur dairy farmer from Castle Douglas, southwest Scotland. Uh, and as Her Highness said in a previous meeting from the land of milk and honey, uh, generally because of the mild climate. I'll just see if we can get this uh, sorted. Sorry, I'll just bear with me to hit the right button. Some of the uh, audience might reflect, and certainly a lot of the audience, I should say, would reflect my parents, uh, proud to say. Uh, and again, uh, we moved to East Logan, and it's a different color of cow, and uh, different age group, different uh, generation. Uh, it was actually 1971, and again, allergies just keep coming up. Now, not many of you in this room uh, probably know this either. And again, I have to uh, ask for a wee bit uh, forgiveness before I say this. It was actually 1971, Her Highness won the Sports Personality of the Year. And I didn't know that, but I discovered that because I was lucky enough to get to attend it this year and you get the brochure with all the previous winners. So uh, we're in... Uh, mentioned to her, her Highness again. So from the beginning till now, there's the difference. Brian and I now wear trousers. <coughs> <laughs> long trousers, long trousers I may say. But the si more seriously, the size, shape and colour of cows has changed somewhat. I'm married to my wife Sandra and have three girls, as the, the conference is waking up to the fact. Uh, starting from the left, Linda, Jennifer, and Kirsty. And the cow in presence is uh, Stan at Luella. Family, very keen then, and still very keen today. Today's conference, as I've said, certainly, as far as I'm concerned, is really an allergy. It's this is your life. So you're now at the stage of the conference, it's a wee bit more lighthearted, and it's this is your life because it's 25 years since we were uh, given the opportunity to go into the neighboring farm from East Logan. My father met the previous owner over a cup of coffee, and within a fortnight, we had agreed to buy the farm and walked into uh, Micklefirth Head. Uh, lock, stock and barrel. And again, that's what I say, it's exactly 25 years ago uh, is the allergy again. Back then, 91, 90, that was the beginning of the change. That's how the farm was then. Uh, you'll probably see a bit of a change. The building began in a greenfield area. And again, just to mention, it was done by my brother and I, predominantly in the early days, family labor. And uh, basically, that's how it all started in the original shed. Again, back to allergies, and I'm sorry, there's just so many keep coming up. I'm sharing this uh, platform this afternoon, and it's quite scary because we had a dispersal sale in 1991, and my father did to raise funds to uh, help finance the, the second farm. And on that day, the Joyland herd joined us for uh, dispersing some cows. So who would have put money on in a lottery position that would share the stage today, 25 years later? Here come the cows. 
After the dispersal, there was 38 cows split from East Logan. They walked across the road, literally, to the new unit. <coughs> and milking started on the 20th of June, 92. And those that uh, are here, and I get reminded often, you don't seem to do much milking, but I can assure them that I did plenty in my earlier youth. It's a second-hand seven-a-side parlor, and again, my younger wife and uh, my eldest daughter at the time. I have note here from my father's uh, records. It was uh, the first milk ticket. It was 1,141 litres, uh, 47,000 over the month. How things have changed. Again, not much new. It's just the completion of the start uh, in those days. And the real reason this is, or part of the reason this slide up is, where's the safety nets nowadays? Uh, believe it or not, that's me up there taking the chains off for the crane. And the other main allergy, concrete then was 30 pound a meter. I can distinctly remember it. Uh, Mushroom cubicles were installed at the start. Again, we saw this morning from the college about Newton rig cubicles. I can remember them. We moved on to the mushroom cubicles and deep bedding. We've talked about that this morning. And uh, here we are then and now with where our new shed and new design of uh, farm cubicles are now. <coughs> Including deep bedding, green bedding, as you'll hear in a minute, and even sand. I mentioned to John, I would, uh, I would like to uh, apologise, I'm using a wee bit of his information here, and, and again I apologise, there's been that much reflection over the past years, and a lot of my, some of my content has been uh, already well and truly aired, and therefore uh, it's nothing new. But I just, looking back records, and for over the period of piece of time, come across cuttings and what have you, and uh, John, 20 years ago, uh, made allergies there, of the highlight, the main things being that uh, it was basically 20 pence for milk then, and we're very, very much back there now. But agreeing with John, we need a market structure. Uh, we need a managed market structure, and this would be bliss compared with what we have today. And also, you know, we'll get ourselves through this downturn, and the potential is there for an optimistic future. Just something different, again, just bringing back memories and when you're trolling through the records, not mean much to many, but it might mean more to others. Uh, we had heavy snow in 96, followed by heavy floods in 98. Uh, our area in Friesen Galloway was declared a state of emergency in that time. Again, uh, we've been lucky enough to host events. Uh, this was actually 97, 98, and it's not 100% correct in that it was the, Scot the South West Holstein Club uh, visit then, and then it was actually 2002 that it was the Scottish Holstein Club in which we had uh, visits of, to both Firthhead and East Logan. Uh, and at that time, in 97, 98, Brian and I, the farm's father, split the farm up business-wise between us. Again, I've mentioned a few. I've been <coughs> proved the point that I was here in 2000. Entrepreneurs again was Philip Green that day, uh, who was in the dairy industry at that time, uh, and he was highlighting, as the message suggests, uh, we were allowing that uh, milk processors were hammering the milk prices down, and uh, our you know the supermarket prices, and so nothing's changed. Milk boards made farmers very lazy. Uh, so farmers need to take control of their destiny. And that was the message, and invest in processing. So perhaps with Arla and things in more recent years, uh, the message is finally getting through. Just to mention, and obviously not to dwell, it affected some more than others. Uh, it has lasting memories, but it was just in, in the piecemeal of the period of time affected our area. 2002, we were actually runner-up. We won the Scottish uh, silage competition, and Julie in 2000 and, and did a presentation, and we were runner-up in the British uh, silage competition uh, in 2003. And 
obviously that uh, you know put the onus on to host the British Grassland Society summer tour, uh, which we kindly did. As our chairman introduced, he said we did some silage contracting. This uh, started way back in the early days of East Logan and still continues to this day. Uh, as with the cows, it has expanded or moved on in the years. And uh, from 100 horsepower to 600 horsepower is basically the, as the slides would indicate. Uh, and nowadays, 100 cows it was is 500 cows. We have been through the piece of the maze and the entrepreneur thing uh, rears its ugly head again. And it was actually 27 years ago, I came back from Canada, America and started growing maize. I may say we've actually stopped in the last two years, but uh, I was heavily involved in maize in the early years and it has taken me to north, east, west and even the islands of Scotland to drill maize. So we're now back at grass and whole crop cereal and uh, we harvest about three and a half thousand acres of grass and seven, eight hundred acres of whole crop annually. Again, Chairman mentioned something a bit new. Uh, with us today is my eldest daughter. She uh, went to hospitality, did hospitality, I should say. She actually worked at this uh, licensed uh, pub down the road. And so nothing not to be afraid, we ventured into the license trade. Uh, as happened through young farmers, a friend and I, young farmers one night, would it be a good idea to go half hours and buy a pub, buy the local pub, which always seemed to be the place to be, if you, you know, sounded a good idea at the time, is, was, good idea. I must say at that time, Sandra, my wife, uh, did not enjoy it. The thought of it, commitment to it or whatever, and was dead against it. But anyway, we proceeded and we decided to try pulling pints as well as pulling the dairy teats. And I remember back at that time, we were milk protesting and we were pouring milk down the drain. So how things keep moving around. And as Tom Callan keeps reminding me every time he comes to visit me, how the contemplation at that time was, we were, you know, we even contemplated selling up and, you know, with a pub and we'd offered for an arable farm. So, you never, never stop thinking, never stop thinking. You'll wonder what this was here for. Again, the chairman didn't pick up on this one. Uh, Christmas one year, the girls said to me, Dad, we're needing something new. We're not wanting just the usual for Christmas. And after a bit of deliberation of, uh, I'll just leave it at different breeds. Uh, we c I wanted something sensible that we could possibly uh, market, something quiet, not limousine, something workable. So we took off to Stirling and 208 and bought a, came back with a 4,000 pound cow and a heifer calf at foot. Today that's 12 Anguses and I've got one bull for sale. <laughs> back to more what it's like today and it's 2010, we business growth again. And again, it's all just in the, you know, as it's happened, uh, we've been so fortunate. The neighboring property on the other side of us, uh, Turcatron Farm, had a farmer had two sons, neither of interested in farming. Uh, it went on to the open market and we were able to rent it. Now, pl plenty of people, including my brother, I would say, questioned our sanity. Uh, probably still questions it to, to this day, but we have grown to where we are today thanks to the support and I may say hard work from family, friends, staff, consultants even, and even the bank. But the bank, the backbone to it all being staff, and that's been talked about today, how important that is, uh, but also as relevant to CMEX, breed good cows, and again, you know, that's been the backbone of the whole operation is having the interest in the cows and trying to breed good cows. The cubic, sorry, I should have just said there was a new cubicle shed uh, built uh, in that period to accommodate 188 cows that we took on to, you know, we took the cows on with the farm to accommodate and justify the extra acres. This slide is not just 
right in that it's out of sync in the respect of, it was actually, the new parlour was installed in 2002 at 2828, uh, but subsequently with the extra cows in latter years, it has been extended. It's now a 40-40 and we don't feed in the parlour, so the feeders are out. Sheds as they are today, there's nothing new in that. We've seen uh, that this morning. Just other sheds, just again, more recently, uh, a machinery shed over the years and a calf shed, and more recently, a uh, feed shed uh, where pigeons and starlings and everything, I'm afraid uh, we probably need to do more about that. Again, more recently, uh, 2012, we got an SRDP grant for the extra cows to incorporate more slurry storage. So we've increased our slurry storage now to two and a half million. Uh, and at, at that time, we installed the green bedding, as we've heard this morning, we, heard, we installed the green bedding separator and we bed our cows with the uh, green bedded sawdust, uh, solids, sorry. Not to be outdone, we've touched on renewables. We had an earlier investment of uh, 12 kilowatt. We've just had a more recent one, which is added on to that one. And we're now up to 50 kilowatt system. And all I would say, as the speaker said this morning, it's proving to be better than predicted. Moving on to the backbone of the, of the place, the, the, the cows. And again, analogy back to this 25 years ago. And again, you'll not believe me, but it's, it's right. 1990, my father took off to Canada and uh, invested a third share at Hanover Hill, Hanover Hill dispersal. 125,000 for Hanover Hill triple threat mark I. <clears throat> and that's, you might say, you know, it doesn't get out of the blood and out of the genes and what have you, and why we, we're all, as a family, interested in cows as he is. Coming back to more recently, my purchases, my first purchase was went, went with father down to uh, Grove Link. And that's how we got the bug. Uh, we were very fortunate to come back with a Wallen cow. That was a cow we bought, a family that matured that day from that dispersal. And we had a lot of fun in the show ring in the, in the early days with our Wallen cow. More recently, as this slide shows, was bought as a calf. And you know, when you buy youngsters, it's all a potluck. But our investment for 4,000 that day was Stan at Luella, and again, she put us on the map and started the journey. Then we move on to 2001 in the respect of on the cow side. It was a silent auction at uh, black, and, black and White Sale at Carlisle. It was uh, therefore your bidding on video, and we, we uh, Made, we were successful enough to uh, go to Woodmarsh. There was a carload of worthies from uh, our area. Took off to Woodmarsh one day, and uh, we went and I bought this black Woodmarsh shuttle Zandra calf. But needless to say, there was another one in the pen, a Melody, and we ended up coming back with two. That's Mick Gould's good salesmanship, or my weakness in cows. The next investment, well, it's not an investment. This was a homebred cow, which we've had a serious, put us really, you know, there in that it's homebred. Uh, she's just calved fresh with her sixth about a month ago, and uh, she was actually honourable mention all Britain. Uh, so we've made other investments in Millian Rose, Joynton. Joe Flo, Berry Home, the Joe Flo with Andrew Bunting. And other families, just very briefly, we've invested in the Errol, Ghost, Ashlyn, Beauty, more recently, Jodie, and Classy. But today's homebred star, as I'm sure a lot of you might know, is uh, Lutschke. And I'm sorry, I have a right soft spot for her. She was uh, All Britain senior milking heifer, and is now, as I say, I'm standing here proudly as nominated for the senior cow class this year. Reference that had pleasure in meeting Her Highness earlier on this year. Uh, she asked where I was from at the Yorkshire show, and that was the top picture. And I said Castle Douglas. She kindly said where all the grass was, and I 
There's no pulling over the, that wool over uh, Princess Anne's eyes. She knew exactly where we were from. I didn't think I would be standing here having the opportunity uh, to talk again. And the bottom show more recently, uh, Dairy UK at Telford this year, where we were uh, reserve, supreme, reserve Supreme. Just a few quick slides. I haven't went into a lot of detail about various things, what, you know, uh, but no doubt there may be some in questions will come up, but I've just put a resume of where we are and what, you know, what, what's going on. Production, fertility. I may say we have a herdsman who has uh, changed things greatly in the last few years and uh, carbon intervals coming down and uh, that just speaks for itself. That uh, is an overview of the printout you get off the farm computer and you can see for yourself it's fairly a milk buyer's dream to have a level production all year round but I think all Arla boys are away. The future. Part of my remit was to talk about the future and uh, well, who would have thought six months ago we are where we are today? So how can I predict it for one year, never mind 25 years? So I've broken it down and I've tried to be, as you see, uh, clever about it, but not really. Consolidation. We've, event, we've invested in sheds and cow families over the years to accommodate expansion for the opportunity that has arisen, but also to better our herd genetics. So I think we sit tight, we monitor costs within our business, we scrutinize, analyze, and be ready for the good road ahead. Communication. This can be the, our farmer's biggest weakness. On a daily basis, whether it be with staff, family, other farmers, within business, trade, consultants, even the bank, communication can be our weakness. I've been fortunate over my 25 years to travel quite a lot and I must say others uh, pointed out to me not very often with my dear wife Sandra but gathering knowledge cow systems milk production whether it be in Europe UK Canada America it's important to listen to these people in the industry and <clears throat> to take on board opinions dissect what has been said and return and apply it within your own business and uh, just picking up on a point of David Hanley said yesterday how important it was and uh, it was glad communication was one of David Hanley's uh, strong messages to us. And cooperation. Now more than ever we need to cooperate with each other. So wh whether it be sharing staff, sharing machinery or bulk buying but working together to integrate business for a common goal is the way I see going forward. The family now. I may say we haven't inherited David Gray, for those that know David Gray. <laughs> Jenny, Kirsty, and uh, Linda. That was at Dairy UK this year. Uh, Jenny, on my left there, she's with us today. She's had two years in a New Zealand milking cows. And uh, I think, she, to be honest, she would say she'd prefer to be back there milking cows than at the moment. She's uh, admirably milking cows at home. And uh, I hope someday she'll enjoy it. And hopefully this female dominance will keep carrying the business on. Linda on the right, I'll go to first because she's here today. Uh, my brother kindly brought her up. Uh, hopefully she's going to travel home all right because she's uh, imminently due to produce her first grandchild I'm told and how, what I'm going to be called after, after conference or very shortly it doesn't bear thinking about but proud I may say the middle one Kirsty again it's been mentioned already uh, sorry I should have had that slide up We've been very proud again this year that she's represented Scotland in uh, the Commonwealth Games. So uh, we're quite uh, diverse, and, uh, but I will say they're all very interested in the farm at home. That's uh, the take-home message. Otherwise, 
I probably wouldn't still get the buzz that I see they get the buzz from uh, with the involvement and about the cows and the, you know, there's a good calf born this morning. We, we were fortunate, as I've told one or two people that we flushed their good cow yesterday and got five embryos. So, you know, and the girls are the first ones to uh, give me feedback as to whether, uh, you know, there's a future. And I, I, I'm quite confident there is in their female hands. No. Finally, in my conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, my prediction of the future of the dairy industry for some <clears throat> some for consideration, some may not be new. A strong family farms, whether they're robot or they'll be niche or be organic or whatever, will be an option. I reckon, as we've in, heard already, that there will be fewer uh, fewer, larger operations, integrated with neighbouring farms, working far closer together. If one farmer's business, as we've heard yesterday, affects 40 businesses in the community, and again one of our speakers said yesterday, we need to shout loud enough that more people out there hear us, and it's nice to see things hitting the press, and the message will be to support the dairy industry. Thank you for listening. 